Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see the topic point to point protocol. The protocol we use in computer networks where multiple systems are connected and a data transfer between a point to point a device is connected in the network. People who use internet connections and whoever in a network accessing internet they actually connect uh, with the uh, different points and uh, every users are connecting servers of a service provider with the help of uh, cable which are connected. So the traditionally telephonic lines were uh, being used actually to connect uh, uh, multiple points in a network and uh, to monitor and to check uh, proper data transfer between one point to another point. In this protocol, we are going to see what are all the services provided and not provided and the frames, uh, the format of the frame to be followed when we transfer data between point to point and to understand the data transfer, uh, how data is transferring from one station to another station with the help of this finite state machine, we are going to understand the transition. And finally, we will discuss about the multiplexing. So in first of all, uh, these are the services uh, provided in point to point protocol. The frame format has been defined in this. The frame actually contains uh, data which are collected from the network layer and all the information about the sender and the receiver and other controlling informations. So the frame format is de defined. We will see the frame format. What are the fields are there in the frame defined in point to point protocol and next uh, it defines how two devices negotiate yes when there is a transfer of data between two devices how the connections are established and a kind of data transfer between two points are actually defined and designed to accept and use a data different payloads from several network layers and next services provided are authentication and multi-link point-to-point -point protocol net network address configuration so authentication when two unknown points when two unknown people want to access the internet or to share the information so in order to identify and validate the user or the person who is accessing the server or the data need to be authenticated then multi-link point-to-point -point protocol collecting the information transfer of data between different uh, points and network address configuration when user wants to connect to the internet with the temporary network address the network address can be configured here so these are the uh, services generally provided uh, when users are connected in the internet and uh, data sharing between a uh, point to point the format of the frame has been defined through which different users can uh, establish the connection and make authentication for unknown people access and different link data transfer and few points and few services that are actually not provided in point to point protocol are there is no flow control when there is a data transfer between a sender and receiver sender has to first of all understand the capability of the receiver how effectively the receiver is collecting all data transmitted by the sender if the capacity of the receiver is less than the sender and if sender is sending multiple data in a high speed receiver will not be able to access all data so there is a requirement of uh, controlling the flow so the different protocols used are uh, basically stop and wait protocol and the mechanism in stop and wait protocol is using acknowledgement for received data and to process uh, next data and go back and yes sir actually sliding window protocol where we use pipelining concept but here in point to point protocol there is no control for the flow of data so the sender will not think how actually receiver is collecting the data even there is a overflow like in sliding window protocol we need to increase the efficiency of the system we use the mechanism and there is a format uh, for uh, sequence numbering so that the order of the packets are uh, properly received and because there is no flow control in point to point the sequence number may cause to receive the packet out of order and in a multi-point communication there is no proper addressing mechanism to handle different frames so these are the services uh, which are not there in point to point protocol so we can see these points may cause the system inefficient sometimes in some case so next let us see uh, the frame format yes uh, the frame format in point to point protocol is actually defined and this is the frame and the, these are the fields in the point to point protocol the first and the last fields are actually flag because here uh, the payload field is variable it is not fixed so variable means the receiver has to understand where this frame actually starts and where this frame actually ends 
So flags are generally helping uh, the receiver to identify where frame starts and where frame ends. Here it is character oriented frame in point to point protocol. So bytes, uh, so informations are carried in the form of byte. Here we use group of bytes to carry the user data from one point to another point. And then the address field uh, here, the size of the address field is one byte and it is constant uh, fixed with all ones. All eight bits are ones. The all ones are actually meaning broadcast addressing. And here uh, the control field is of uh, one byte and these are the number sequence of the control field uh, which is similar to unnumbered frame control field of uh, high level data link control. And next protocol that is one to two bytes and protocol defines what data is actually carried in the frame either user data or any other information and payload is nothing but the data information user data collected from the upper layer network layer and all are packed into this frame then FCS frame check sequence here we use error detection techniques like uh, CRC the CRC method can be used here uh, to find error at the receiver side if there is any corruption in the received data or not. So the overall uh, diagram is showing actual uh, frame format defined in point of mind protocol and one more step we need to consider when we talk about the character oriented frames there is a byte stuffing because byte stuffing we do when the similar pattern of the flag is actually there in the information. If the flag byte similar to the flag byte is there included in the data, here we introduce extra byte so that the receiver will not take this as an end. When the packet, when the frame is actually reaching the receiver side, that receiver will remove the extra byte and continue the next byte in the data as an actual data and will not consider that as an end flag. So this is about framing part in point to point protocol. Let us understand how transition the data transfer between a point to point happening. So let us consider the two points are actually connected in a network and there is a data transition between one point to another point. Let's see, you see this date state. Date state means there is a channel, there is a transition medium between one point to another point and there is no data transfer. So initially there is no data transfer which is meaning here date state. And if any one of the point starts to communicate, starts to transfer a data and transition starts and transition starts. So the connection between one point to another points are to be established. So as the frame format defined in a point to point protocol, these two points are actually defining and negotiating the kind of data and type of data transfers and can initially establishing the link. And in case uh, if uh, these two points are unknown points if, and to uh, process further, uh, there is an authentication requirement. Also the point one wants to access the server of point two. So it needs, uh, for example, point two may fix some security steps like creating user ID and password based on the authentication of uh, ID and password from an unknown user. It will validate and uh, once it is done and the point one will be able to access the data from the server of point two. And if authentication is done, the user access is accepted and next step to configure a network that is to collect the information from upper layer. In case if uh, authentication is failed, what happens? So it gets into terminate and the carrier is dropped again, the channel becomes dead state. Or else if uh, the authentication is passed, that is the condition is true, then the network is configured and uh, there is a data transfer and the data transfer is actually open state once the data transfer is completed between the one point to another point that all carriers are transmitted then the process is over after the final data transmission the transition is actually to terminate the open state so after termination again the state becomes dead See, in order to make the system more efficient and uh, uh, increase the uh, system performance uh, the multiplexing it combines multiple protocol multiple mechanisms are combined together to increase the system performance better though this uh, point to point protocol is a link layer protocol it is using another set of protocols like uh, link control protocol and authentication protocol and network control protocols to establish to authenticate and to transfer a data 
at any point the data from all these protocols are actually carried in payload area of the frame so the payload contains the data from different network layer and all data is from these protocol and data is from these lcp ap and ncp protocols and ap this authentication protocol is generally for security purpose and this network control protocol is actually configuring the network layer to proceed with the data transfer from upper layer so the link control protocol is generally used when to connect uh, points that is to establish a connection to transfer a data and to when the data is transmitted to maintain the connection and to configure and to terminate the link uh, this link control protocol are actually carried in payload area and next authentication is very important uh, uh, process when unknown points are actually accessing the connections here two sub protocols have been followed to make the system security efficient that is password authentication protocol and challenge handshake authentication protocol in password authentication protocol is uh, nothing but the security as we discussed uh, during the transition process when user want to access a system that user is actually sending uh, authentication identification its identity let's say username and password to the system where it needs to access the server so the system will identify the username and password and authorize to access the system sources and next in the chap that is challenge handshake authentication protocol so there are three way of handshaking authentication a system will send a challenge to the user when the user wants to access a source from the system and the user will perform the task and find the solution for the challenge provided by the sender and the results are matching then the access is provided to the user to access the system and final one is a network control protocol here the point to point protocol is generally a multiple network layer protocol and this point to point protocol can carry a network layer data packet from these protocols defined from these protocols that is internet osi xerox dc net apple talk novel and so on ipcp internet protocol control protocol configures the link to carry ip data packets and the same way xerox control protocol is doing the same defines to carry xerox protocol data packets likewise all different protocols in network control protocol are defining how data packets are to be carried so this is how the point to point protocol is combining this link control protocol authentication protocol and ncp protocol when there is a data transition between one point to another point so in this lecture we have studied about the kind of services provided by the point to point protocol and type of frames defined in point to point protocol where the addresses of broadcast and variable type payload and to define the starting and ending of the frame we use flags and there is no flow control and to control errors we use crc in the frame check sequence field and the protocol field defines what type of data is actually carried thank you